Hi folks, this is International Master Kosti Kabutsky, and today I'll be doing part two on a video series on board awareness. Today's video, we're going to be talking a lot about visualization. Like I have mentioned before in videos, visualization is one of the most important skills for a chess player that often goes overlooked. And specifically when I say visualization, I mean your ability to actually see the board in your calculations accurately so that you can calculate more than just one move ahead. Visualization is something that's really important because this is what allows you to actually calculate in a chess game and see three, five, even seven moves ahead at a time. So you're able to accurately predict events and figure out what your opponent is going to play and plan your moves in advance. Now, not everyone starts off being fantastic at visualization. This is definitely a scale. Some people are better at it naturally than others. So for today's video, I'm going to be mostly be talking about how to specifically work on your visualization so that you can improve it. My personal opinion is that visualization works very much like a muscle. Uh, the more you train it, the more you practice at it, the stronger it becomes. If you don't work on your visualization, it might improve naturally as you're playing chess, but it's a lot more effective to train it specifically. So there are a number of ways to get better at visualization. One of the easiest ways is to simply practice as much as possible when you're playing and when you're solving puzzles. For example, if you're solving puzzles, you should be trying to visualize the whole solution before you go through the answer. Meaning if you have a puzzle in front of you, you should try to see the entire solution five, seven, 10 moves deep and only then play through it, right? You shouldn't be making move by move and then seeing the new position as it comes. In a game, this is also a great way to practice your visualization. You try to calculate, let's say two moves ahead, try to visualize the board, it'll be hard. You keep doing it and over time it becomes easier and you're able to see two moves ahead, four moves ahead and so on. So in general, just playing a lot and really being aware of the idea that visualization is a skill, you're already on the right track. Then there are specific exercises you can do in order to increase your visualization ability. And depending on your level, you may want to start with maybe some of the easier exercises that I'll talk about and then work your way on to some of the more difficult ones. The first exercise I'd like to suggest involves you imagining a blank chessboard in your brain. So that means you're going to be working without any chessboard, whether online or physical. So you're just closing your eyes and imagining a chessboard. And your only task is to choose a square at random, let's say C5 or D7 or G4, choose a square at random and try to figure out what color it is. So for example, you'd be imagining a blank chessboard in your head, you come up with some square, let's say B7, and then you have to guess whether it's a white square or a dark square. Obviously, this exercise doesn't work if you have a chessboard in front of you as you can just look at the board and cheat. So this is only for when you're on your own without a chessboard. And this is just the basic start. Eventually, you should be able to know the color of the square almost instantly after you think of it. So for example, if I say the square E8, you should know that it's a white square almost immediately. And with time and practice, you can work on this. The next exercise I would suggest is to choose a knight and again, place it on your imagined board anywhere on the board. So you can choose a square, let's say F5, and then choose another square at random, let's say B4. And after coming up with these two squares in your mind, your task is to find the quickest route for the knight on F5 to get to this square B4. And then you should be able to visualize that the knight can come to D4 and then C2 and then B4 or it can go through c6 and then b4. Usually there's gonna be more than one way for a knight to reach another square in the quickest number of moves possible. Of course, your task is to find the fastest way, and in order to challenge yourself, you can try to find all the different ways the knight can reach. Here it seems like the knight has to take three moves to get there. There's the two routes I highlighted here, but there's also many different routes. For example, e7, d5, e7, c6, e3, c2, and d5 to b4. In fact, I may be missing one because the knights are very tricky and they have a lot of different ways to get from one square to another. Really challenge yourself, 
by choosing the two corner squares, h1, a8, and then figure out the fastest number of moves it takes the knight to get to the corner. If you do these exercises periodically, maybe once a day or once every two days, naturally your visualization will start to improve and you'll see in a game it will be a lot easier specifically to visualize knight moves. Another way to do this is to do it with a bishop. Again, you're imagining the board, you choose a random square for the bishop, let's say d7, and then you choose another square and see the fastest way for the bishop to get there. Now this one is tricky because obviously you have to choose a square that is the same color as the original square. So a square like f2, you're going to be struggling finding a way for this bishop to get there. All right, let's say we choose f1. How would the bishop get there? And over time, you'll quickly be able to see bishop goes to b5 and f1 or h3 to f1. Actually, fun fact, a bishop can get to any square on the board in two moves or less. So either the bishop can immediately go there or the bishop can find one diagonal and get to the square. So if it's taking you more than two moves to get there, you're probably doing something wrong. Another exercise I'd like to mention that is a bit more challenging is to play blindfold chess. This is something that I started doing when I was around 1800, but I recommend it for players of a lower level. I'd say you can even start playing blindfold chess when you're 1200 or 1400, maybe around that range. So playing blindfold chess, usually with a friend, is I think, in my opinion, one of the best ways to work on your visualization. So if you don't know the rules, they're all the same as regular chess, except you have to call out the moves you're playing, and obviously you're playing without a board and without pieces. Now this is going to be really, really hard at first, but over time, once again, the more you play, the more success you'll have at it. I think my first blindfold game, I was able to make maybe 10 moves, and then I completely lost track of the position. I think that's a pretty normal situation for most players. You might be only able to do five moves, and then you'll have to look at the board. That's fine. I strongly believe that the more you work on it personally, the better you'll become. Eventually, you'll be able to keep track of an entire game in your head. Now, you won't play well necessarily in that game, but that's not the point of the exercise. The point is to just keep the position in your brain as accurate as possible. Once you're able to do one game, try to do two games at once, meaning you play two separate games all in your head, all blindfold. And once you're able to do two games, I think you'll see your visualization is going to be able to improve quite a lot. Now for the second part of this video, I just want to give you guys a couple of tactical problems where we can talk about different aspects of visualization and hopefully I can give you some more tips on how to work on it. In this position, this is white to play and win. White is currently up in exchange, but this is not yet a decisive material advantage. So if you'd like, you can pause the video and try to find white's best move. Okay, if you want more time, and I do suggest you try the exercises for yourself, Please pause the video and keep thinking, but otherwise we'll move on. So a lot of things going on in this position. This bishop on h3 is currently hitting the rook, white's queen is hitting the bishop, and black's queen is also attacking our bishop on c4. If white plays a move like queen takes h3, black will play queen takes c4, and white hasn't won any material. He's still up the exchange, but the game is not that clear. Instead, white has a winning tactical shot, and rook takes f4. And the point is, after e takes f4, we have queen c3 check. Black's king has no move, so black has only two options here. He has to block on d4, either with the rook or with the queen. If black plays rook to d4, then white wins with rook d1 attacking this pinned piece on d4, and white is going to be up a rook and win the game. Queen d4 is a bit harder to find. So if you'd like, if you haven't seen this position yet, you can try and pause the video again and find the win for white. And white wins with the move rook to d1. This is a really nice tactic. The point is after queen takes c3, white does not take the queen, but first inserts rook takes d8 check, king to g7, and b takes c3. So this exercise illustrates why visualization is so important. From the starting position, if you're trying to calculate or if this was a real game and you're looking for the best move, you might notice that rook takes f4 leads to a dangerous attack after queen c3 check. But then once black plays queen to d4, it'd be hard to visualize that you have this move rook to d1 followed by rook takes d8 with a check. 
And if you're not able to visualize, then you won't be able to play the combination because, well, in your eyes, it's, the combination is not working. So one thing I suggest to all my students is when you're solving a problem, if you don't get the full solution, what you should then do is go back to the original position like we are here and try to visualize all the moves of the problem and see if you can visualize it until the end now that you know the solution. So if you guys want, you can practice this now. Pause the video and then visualize. Rook takes f4, e f4, queen c3 check, queen d4, rook d1, queen takes c3, rook takes d8 check, king g7, and b takes c3. Try to visualize that position in your mind as accurately as possible. And this makes things a little bit easier because you obviously already know the solution to the puzzle. All you need to do is visualize the moves and see if you can visualize all the way till the very end. And this gives you a sense of what it's like to visualize at a higher level. Now you're seeing all the same moves, let's say a stronger player would see, and you're trying to get a feel for what it's like to visualize all that. If the position seems really fuzzy, then play one move out and go from here and try to visualize the rest. Case in point, the more you work on it in, let's say, incremental steps, the better at it you'll become. If you're not sure that you're visualizing the final position correctly, there is a very interesting way that you can test yourself. So from this position, let's say you asked yourself to visualize the final position of the problem after white recaptures the queen on c3. What you can do to test yourself is in that position, try to identify every possible capture. So what I'm saying is in that position that you're visualizing, try to then visualize further and figure out every possible capture for both sides. So if you want, you can try that now for this problem. Okay, well, let's go to the very end of the problem and see what we got. So if you're able to visualize this position, you would then see that in fact, there are no captures available. And if you're able to determine that, it means that your visualization was probably pretty accurate. But of course, this is a rare case. In a lot of positions, there'll be tons of captures available on the board. And the only way you'll be able to spot all of them is if your visualization is accurate. Here's another cool problem that shows the benefits of visualization. If you'd like to try and find the solution, pause the video now and look for White's winning continuation here. And now we'll move on to the solution. So White wins starting with the move Rook takes e8. Black has to take back. Queen takes e8. And White sacrifices the queen in order to get this check on the back rank. But after knight to f8, it's not clear what white has achieved because white is not giving mate. In fact, white is only winning thanks to the final move of the problem, knight to f5. And the point is that this knight is attacking the queen and white is threatening knight e7 check, followed by rook takes f8 with mate. Thanks to this move, knight f5, black has no defense and is losing. He'll have to give back the queen and white is going to be up a rook. For example, queen d7, knight e7 check, and in order to avoid getting mated, black is going to have to take the knight and lose this endgame. So once again, if you'd like to practice your visualization right here and now, what I would suggest is pausing the video, try to play through all the moves in the combination. And then after knight f5, the final move in the position, try to see if you can really visualize that clearly and try to identify all the captures in that position for both sides. Okay, let's go there, there now. If you want more time, of course, you can pause the video. So we'll play through the moves. And in this position, if you're visualizing clearly, you would see that white has four captures. Rook takes knight, knight takes pawn, knight takes queen, and knight takes d5. These are white's only captures available. Black, on the other hand, has one capture, that is queen takes h2. Very easy to miss this one from afar. I'm sure a few of you probably forgot about this move being possible, but that is the point of the exercise. The position is going to change in a number of ways. And in order to really test yourself to see if you're visualizing clearly, if you're able to identify all the captures, that's kind of a good sign that you're seeing the position very clear in your head. 
Well, I hope this was a good lesson for you guys. Just to sum up, visualization is a natural skill that does develop through practice, but I think it's beneficial for players to kind of work on it in very specific terms. I've given you guys a few exercises you can try today. These are all varying in level based on where you're at in your visualization. And the last piece of advice I would suggest is to just try to practice consistently. 30 minutes a day really goes a long way for your chest when you're really working very purposefully on a specific task. With that, we'll end the video here. And until next time, this was International Master Kostya Kavutsky.